Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life with New York Times bestselling author Joyce Meyer. On today's program, Joyce will be teaching from her series, Enjoying Successful Relationships. God wants to bless us, but we must get along. Because where there is unity, there is blessing and anointing. So it's our job to learn how to set aside our own agenda and serve one another through love. Now, here's Joyce with today's teaching. Ephesians 2.10, now look at this. For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works. Why did God recreate us? (laughs) For good works. Things that He predestined and planned ahead of time for us. Taking paths that He prepared ahead of time. Now watch this. That we should walk in them living the good life. Well, you know what? I think that we leave out the good works and just want to skip on to the good life. Everybody loves messages about the good life. I could probably double my crowds if I would just preach about the good life and not jump all over people. I used to get upset because God didn't give me a dessert ministry. I wanted to be one of the people that just flew into town and had a private word for everybody and called everybody up, prophesied to them. Lay everybody out on the floor, grow out legs and, you know, do whatever and leave town. Not me. I got to go in and tell everybody off. I got (laughs) to. But then I finally got it. People can't live on dessert. It tastes good, but you'll die on it. We are recreated. In Christ, born anew, that we may do those good works which he planned ahead of time for us, then living the good life which he prearranged and made ready. We are blessed to be a blessing. And the more we are a blessing, the more blessed we will be. Make sure, though, when you do good works, and I'm sure that you will be more sensitive to doing good works when you leave here. Make sure that you do them with a totally pure motive. Because any works that are done without a pure motive will be burned up in the fire. They absolutely will do you no good. You will get no reward for them. And a pure motive is number one, because you want to glorify God, because he said to. And number two, because you love people and you want to help somebody. You don't do it to get attention. You don't do it to be well thought of. You don't do it to be seen or to be heard or to be noticed. You don't even do it so you can feel good about yourself. <laughs> Got to keep your motives right. And that's another whole message. Luke 14, 16. But Jesus said to him, a man was once giving a great supper and he invited many people. And at the hour for the supper... He sent his servant to say to those who'd been invited, come for now is all ready. And they all alike began to make excuses <laughs> and to beg off. The first said, well, I bought a piece of land and I need to go take care of that. Please have me excused. And another said, well, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to examine and put my approval on that. Sometimes we're so busy taking care of the blessings that God has given us that we don't have any time to bless anybody else. That's the quickest way to lose your blessings. And I love this one, verse 20. And another said, well, I've married a wife. (laughs) Because of this, I cannot come. (laughs) So you know the story. What's your excuse? Matthew 20, verse 20. My gosh, I actually believe I'm going to finish my whole message. That's rare. Matthew 20, verse 20 through 28. This is so good. Then the mother of Zebedee's children came to him with her sons and kneeling down, worshiped him and said, I'd I'd like you to do me a favor. He said, what is it that you want? And she said, give orders that these two sons of mine might sit one on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your kingdom. She wanted them to have position. (laughs) But Jesus replied, you don't even know what you're asking. (laughs) Because, see, she didn't know that with position comes responsibility. The little bit of time I spend in this pulpit, even the 30 minutes a day you see me on TV, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what it takes and has taken to do this. 
Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And that was the baptism of fire. He said, well, you drink my cup. You will drink my cup. But seats at my right hand and my left are not mine to give, but they're those for whom they've been prepared by my father. Now when, and this is, this is just so indicative of people. Now when the other 10 disciples heard what they were saying, they got indignant. Well, who do you think you are asking for one that sat at his right hand and one that sat at his left? If anybody's going to have those seats, it's going to be us. And Jesus called them to him. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, Jesus, knowing what he knew, of course, knowing everything, it must have been a real strain to hang out with people. I mean, if you think you have a tough time spending a day with an unsaved relative, you should try that. <laughs> and gee, some of you are already dreading Christmas, I know. <laughs> You're already thinking, I got to spend the whole day with all those unsaved people. And Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their great men hold them in tyranny. Verse 26, not so shall it be among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever desires to be first must be your slave. Just as the son of man came not to be waited on, but to serve and to give his life for many. So you must do the same thing. The greatest man of all is the one who's willing to wash feet. Anybody's feet. Famous people's feet, people's feet that you don't know, the feet of your family. And once again, when I say that, I'm not talking about an actual foot washing. I'm talking about the spiritual counterpart to that of just doing little things for people. I think we so concentrate on the big things, we forget about the little things. Jesus' life was filled with, yes, big things, but many little things. He saw, he noticed, he stopped. He talked. He healed. Mark 9, verse 30. And they went on from there and passed along through Galilee, and he didn't want anybody to know about it. Or he was engaged for the time. Now, I want you to listen to this. He was engaged for the time in teaching his disciples. So he didn't really want anybody to know that he was in town because he knew it would cause a stir. And he wanted that privacy because he wanted to teach his disciples something. Let's just say maybe it was a setting something like today. Not that I'm anything even remotely close to Jesus, but for today I'm your teacher and I'm trying to teach you something. And he was getting ready to tell them something extremely important. He said, the son of man is being delivered into the hands of men and they are going to put him to death. And when he's been killed after three days, he will rise from the dead. I mean, he's bringing, he's saying, okay, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to die. I'm going to be in the grave three days, but I am going to rise from the dead. But they did not comprehend what he was saying. Like, like that, you're going to, you're going to kill, die, grave, resurrection. We don't get it. And when they arrived at Capernaum and they were in the house, he asked them, I love this, what were you discussing and arguing about back there on the road? Of course, he already knew. But they kept still, for on the road, they had been discussing and disputing one with another as to which of them was the greatest. <laughs> Lord, help us. Jesus is saying, I'm getting ready to die. Somebody's going to kill me. I'm going to die. I'm going to go to the grave for three days. I'm going to have to go to hell and take the keys of hell and death away from Satan. I'm going to rise from the dead. And they're having an argument about which of them was the greatest. Well, we're sitting out there all bent out of shape because we think we should be the one leading the worship and I've got a better voice than that girl that's the lead singer and I can preach better than that preacher can anyway. You know, I remember sitting in my living room when I knew I had a call to preach and actually, and I don't mean this in a wrong way, but I could preach pretty good from the get-go because God just gave me a gift. But for five years, he only let me teach 25 people. And I would look at people on TV and I would think, I don't understand why God doesn't promote me. I can preach better than that.
exactly why he didn't promote me, but I didn't understand it. I didn't know that it had more to do with character than charisma. A lot of people have a gift that'll take them somewhere, but they don't have enough character to keep them there. One No wonder we have so many failures and people just making a mess out of the whole thing. Jesus is trying to tell them the most important message ever, and they're arguing about which of them is the greatest. So he has to say it again. <laughs> the greatest of all is the servant of all. The one who's willing to be last will be first. What are we going to do about this message today? You're just going to go home and get ready in the morning and go back to church? I hope you do, but... I'd like to think that you're going to do something to make this applicable between now and then. Has anybody had a foot washing chance since last night? Well, what happened to the rest of you? I guess you don't get it yet. You didn't notice. There's only about 25 people that raised their hands. All right, last verse, Philippians 2. Going to give you one more opportunity to get this. You know, I think you should get excited and you should just have this sensing. I can, I can hardly wait to get out of here and start putting this to practice. I can hardly wait to see what God's got for me to do today. How many of you want more power in your life? All right, I'm about to show you how to get it. Verse 5, Philippians 2, 5. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. You cannot be a spiritual foot washer if you don't have humility. Otherwise, you're always trying to find some upper class position to make you feel better about yourself.
who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Let's remember when Jesus washed feet, he took off his garment and put on a servant's towel. When he was done, he took off the servant's towel and put back on his garment. Okay, I'm standing here in my office as a teacher in the body of Christ, and I've got on my spiritual garment of authority. But thank God, after many years of being a miserable Christian, I finally learned how to take this off and put on a servant's towel, and then when I come back up here, put this back on again. <laughs> but he stripped himself. Nobody took it away from him. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant and a slave. See, we think that being a servant is weakness. It's the greatest place of power that you can ever come to, especially if you're doing it because you know who you are in Christ and you know why you're doing it. People are all different, so we need to learn how to relate to everyone, not just those who are like us. Today, we're offering Ask Joyce insights from God's Word about relationships. It's a Q&A formatted hardcover book full of practical advice from the Bible. You'll also receive Forgiveness, available as a physical booklet or digital download. This resource will help you let go of past hurts and move forward with life. Contact us now to receive this package for your gift of $20 or more to the ministry. Order now at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll free at 1-800-789-789. Digital resources are stored on the Joyce Meyer app, so download it today. Let your light shine this holiday season and brighten someone's day by being a blessing. We give gifts on Christmas to celebrate the greatest gift of all, Jesus. If you want to share His love with people all around the world, please consider giving a special end-of-year gift to Joyce Meyer Ministries. Visit JoyceMeyer.org slash donate. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening to Enjoying Everyday Life. Joyce Meyer Ministries' mission is to share Christ and love people. Together, we can do so much more.